Though Hooker failed in reaching his objective of the Dunkard Church, the second wave of Sumner's second corps has already exceeded his goal and is pushing through the West Woods to stomp out the last of Confederate resistance. They do not know this, but the Federals are headed into a slaughter that will be led by the 1st Georgia Regulars of Anderson's Georgia Brigade. 1st Georgia, along with their allies, slammed into Sumner's unexpected left wing and scattered it in under 10 minutes, precipitating the eventual retreat of the rest of his corps, thereby securing Lee's left flank once and for all. The 1st Georgia Infantry Regiment, better known as the 1st Georgia Regulars, was raised in the cities of Atlanta and Brunswick and the counties of Glynn and Montgomery. The regiment was mustered into Georgia's service at Macon, Georgia in April of 1861 for 12 months of service. 1st Georgia, along with 2nd Georgia, were unique in a sense that they were the only two regiments authorized by Georgia's secession convention and were given the title of regulars, opposed to other Georgia units that would soon be raised for the war effort. 1st Georgia would be quickly transferred to Confederate National Service and would keep the title of regulars. The regiment would be first sent to Fort Pulaski for training and then in July, the 367-man regiment traveled to Richmond, Virginia to join in the fighting. Once they arrived at Richmond, the Georgians would be assigned to Brigadier General Robert Toombs' Brigade of Georgians that included the 2nd, 15th, 17th, and 38th Georgia Regiments. The regiment narrowly missed the first Battle of Bull Run, which spent the rest of the fall and winter of 1861 in the Confederate fortifications in Centralville. During the Peninsula Campaign, the Georgias would man the trenches around Yorktown but would not see any serious fighting before being pulled back towards Richmond. Here, a fallout between the regimental leaders and tombs would lead to the first being transferred to Brigadier General George T. Teague Anderson's Georgia Brigade that consisted of the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 11th Georgia Regiments on June 20th, 1862. The Georgians had a tough start with Anderson by briefly mutinying, but they would gain their reputation back in their first major action at Garnet's Farm on June 27th at the start of the Seven Days Battle. The Georgians would go on to see action at Fraser's Farm and Malvern Hill. The regiment then would join Longstreet in its attack against Pope in the Northern Virginia Campaign, seeing action at Through a Fair Gap, Second Manassas, and Chantilly. From there, the Georgians would cross the Potomac into Maryland, kicking off that campaign. During the Maryland Campaign, 1st Georgia Regulars would be led by Colonel William J. McGill under George T. Teague Anderson's Georgia Brigade, which is attached to Jones Division and Longstreet's right wing. After passing through Frederick, the Georgians would settle into Crampton's Gap, waiting for McClellan's army to come. The 1st would lose little at the Battle of South Mountain and would reunite with the rest of the Confederates outside of Sharpsburg and would be placed in the Confederate center defending the Middle Bridge. After the Texas Brigade managed to push back Hooker's attack, Anderson's brigade was called in for support on the left. After being sent into motion into the West Woods, the Georgians swept the unexpected Federal left flank of Sedgwick's 2nd Division of Sumner's 2nd Corps, ending their attack just under 15 minutes. After supporting the left flank, the first would be rushed south and ultimately help in pushing back the famed 79th New York Highlanders and their brigade later that day. The first Georgia Regulars is equipped with the Springfield M1842 and the pattern Enfield M1853. The M1842 comes with the regular round ball and the bucking ball shot, allowing soldiers to switch between close and long range ammunition types. While the Enfield M1853 uses the standard Manet ball, which is great at all ranges. With these guns, the first is equipped to fight either up close and personal or at long ranges. These guns will be quite handy on the maps the regiment will be found on. The first Georgia's uniform consists of either just a red shirt or a gray frock coat or shell jacket for the top with brown or gray trousers. 
Some of the men sport gray or brown kepis or, or black and brown felt hats for their covers. Some of the unluckier men will have to go into battle without proper shoes. As for their flag, they carry the first Confederate national flag, aka the stars and bars with Georgia's state seal in the blue corner inside the stars. The seal has a state motto which says, wisdom, justice, and moderation, and underneath an additional motto of, in God we trust. In War of Rights, you can find the first Georgia regulars defending Prygoras Mill from attacks across the Antietam by Federal Cavalry in Otto and Sherrick Farm from the advance of Burnside's men after they took the bridge. Now what would you do? Join in with the Georgians and force the Federals to swim back across the Antietam? Or you'll send them skedaddling back to their burnt state.